And finally, I think to finish up, let's talk about lupus hydroclastic vasculitis. This is something that you may encounter also, and it's important to recognize. From low power vasculitis, usually you'll either appreciate collections of neutrophils or blobs of red fibrin. You may not even be able to tell at low power that there are around vessels because the vessel may be so destroyed, like here, you can't even see that there's really a vessel there. But anytime I see an aggregate of pink fibrin with some neutrophils or dust, right away I'm going to go look for vasculitis. Here you can see there's a lumen of the vessel, but it's very damaged. And looking closer, the classic kind of triad of features you want to see in leukocytoclastic vasculitis is fibrinoid pink fibrin in the vessel wall. We call that fibrinoid necrosis. Um, and then also hemorrhage, so extravasated erythrocytes, red blood cells around the vessel. And finally, neutrophils with nuclear dust or debris that show they're undergoing leukocytoclasis and, and kind of exploding, damaging the vessel in the process. So ideally, you'll see all three of those things, although sometimes we only get two of them or one of them. And in those cases, I may say, well, it's suspicious for vasculitis, but I can't really definitively see fibrinoid necrosis or whatever. So it's important to keep vasculitis in mind because although some of them are limited to the skin and, and relatively indolent, there are other forms that are systemic. And of course, those can be really problematic and even life-threatening for patients, depending on the situation. And here's a list of them. I would say that most of these look relatively similar or can look relatively similar. Microscopically, there are some subtle clues. And I have a whole vasculitis 101 video if you really want to delve into this. But it's important to keep in mind once you tell the, the treating physician vasculitis, then they will go and initiate a, uh, a further clinical and laboratory workup to see uh, if the patient has any of these. This is a unique form of vasculitis that doesn't involve the small vessels of the dermis, but involves kind of a thicker muscular um, artery right around the dermal subcutaneous junction. So it's usually only like one cross section of the artery. And you can see here there's fibrin thrombus in the middle and uh, neutrophils trickling through the muscular wall and destroying it, and then uh, periarterial inflammation here, and this is polyarteritis nodosa, a very distinct um, appearance to, to pan that you can see. And oh, I guess I do have a minute for this, and then we'll, I think we can end um, after this, yes. Thrombotic vasculopathy pattern is when you have thrombi in vessels, but without vasculitis usually. So here, the thrombi, these pink blobs here, are filling the vessel, this stuff here is actually congestion, just red blood cells packed together, but it's packed in there because the thrombi are blocking the vessels. And all of this has cut off blood supply to the epidermis, and the epidermis is beginning to kind of fade and die and undergo acute uh, necrosis from acute ischemia. Anytime you see this pattern in the epidermis of, of, uh, of sudden necrosis, you have to go and find why is there ischemia here, because a lot of these situations are medical emergencies. So in this case, it could be you could look for, um, well, here's a list of things. Uh, DIC and coagulopathies, cryoglobulinemia, angioinvasive fungal infection can produce thrombi like that as well, um, calciphylaxis can, and a variety of other very serious bad uh, situations. So really important if you see this, this needs to get, information needs to get to the treating physician right away so they can get this patient in and work them up, do coag workup, and check for other things to make sure. And I often, when I see this, I often put cryoglobulinemia in. Um, and also, even with vasculitis, if I see a lot of thrombi in the setting of LCV, I'll often include mixed-type cryoglobulinemia. Because a lot of times I think um, if it's presents in an unusual way clinically, people don't think about cryo, and uh, it's kind of an unusual disease. I've seen it present in weird ways clinically and not be on anyone's radar. And it was only on PATH that we said, maybe you should check cryos, and then it, the patient was positive for cryoglobulins. And of course, because that requires a kind of specialized procedure and temperatures and stuff to get the sample from the patient to the lab. Um, it's important to, I think, specifically call that out to make sure that they test for that if there's any concern uh, at all for it. And there's a closer look. This is blood congestion, red blood cells. This is actually fibrin thrombus in the vessels here. 